Welcome to That Will Never Work Podcast. You're listening to Women Empowerment Wednesday. I am your host, Coach LaToya. You can reach me on my website at www.coachingbylatoya.com. Also on Facebook, Coaching by LaToya. And on Instagram, at Life Coach LaToya. So if anything resonates with you or you just want to send a message and you want to say, Hey, I like the episode or you have an idea of an episode that you want me to talk about, definitely send me a message. Be glad to hear from you. All right, let's get into today's show. Welcome to That Will Never Work podcast here on Women Empowerment Wednesday. I am your host, Coach LaToya, and today we have a special guest. Uh, He is near and dear to my heart, and... We'll find out more what's in his mind. Um, it's kind of hard not to like this young man because he has my face. It's my son, Donovan. How are you today, son? I'm quite extravagant, you. <laughs> I am well. So, uh, let's just get right into it. I would like to know, how does it feel to have a mom who's an entrepreneur? Um, I like to say it's very inspiring because I'm trying to make my own business too. So it's like, as I'm seeing you get all the work you need to get done and all the requirements, I'm sitting here like, all right, if that's what she got to do, maybe I could do it and then kind of have it fit my speed, you know, fit my way. And, um, and you always inspire me to like, don't work for nobody else. You be your own boss. And ever since you said that, I've been focused on creating my own business. So then I'll be thriving under something I'm passionate for. And nobody else can tell me what to do while I do it. Oh, that's the main part. (laughs) Nobody else can tell you what to do. Um, I believe no one really told me that growing up. They told me, go to school and get a good job. That's all they told me. And when you worked for others and you pay attention to uh, who you work well for, you know, you get to learn the difference between a boss versus a leader. And I realized after working for so long and sometimes you have a job where you have to pay bills, you have a family. And when it comes down to now starting uh, in the entrepreneur field and it's like oh my goodness I wish somebody would have told me long before I just went and got a job you know and then you started to rack up bills so from the time you were little I tried to instill in you become your own boss do you remember the project you created outside of school when you were in like fourth grade yeah yeah I remember that I remember when I was uh, making it I was sitting there it was going to draw one of the four sites. And I was I was just like making some type of little like screenplay for a, a film, and then I was also doing comic books at the time. And I was like, you know, what if I combined all of this and then just made it one big thing? And then um, I just talked to a bunch of my friends about it, and then they was like, all right, now we got you. And even at lunch, I was like, all right, you got this, you got that. And um, yeah, yeah, I remember that. So you were learning even at an early age how to delegate, which is a true. Uh, I guess um, responsibility of a leader and now I try to focus on teaching you the difference between a boss and a leader yeah do you know the difference of course a boss they don't really care about their uh, team a boss is more of our just get it done and get it over with and they don't really care or like they do care like it has to be to like a specific quality like quality Mm -hmm. but like a leader a leader will like figure out each of their like team and like their members like weaknesses and strengths and they'll put them where they thrive and then put like you you know what i'm saying So, (laughs) so at this point do you believe you are a leader i feel as nobody's a like well like people there are your natural born leaders but i feel as uh every leader has to go through like their struggles and their uh, quest to find like their themselves, you know. Mm-hmm. Like think about it. For example, like uh, LeBron James, who's always considered the king. Um, you he went through a lot 
in his time, like he was, you know, like almost every rags to riches story, he was broke. And then, you know, he just found something he loved and then he kept going with it. And then he did have his bumps. And then now look at him being compared to one of the greatest of all time. And I feel as if what it takes to be a leader is you need to go through that experience. So then you'll be you'll be able to like know what to do when that things happen. So basically you're saying adversity builds character so that yes. you're able to relate yes. to your team. That is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, great. And um, are there any books that help you um, as far as focusing on leadership? Of course. Uh, the 48 Laws of Power that Anthony got, got me. Um, that one and uh, The Art of War. I was re- I read a little bit of it and it still takes me a while to like debunk everything and try to understand it and put that into my life art of war but um definitely the forty eight laws of power because they take certain things you either already do or you don't do and then it puts it like all right if you do this it'll do this and that for you I'm like okay and I've been doing it and it turns out I'm like very reliable for people who are like hey Don look you was the number two in this situation. We're not doing that again. You're going to lead because you know what to do. I'm like, really? Gee, thanks. <laughs> so. so what conversation took place for Antoine to get you that book? Because next thing I know, I'm in the mail and she says, uh, a book's coming your way for Donovan. And I'm like, okay. I remember this is when she came over and then um, her and Ashley came over and then she just looked at the collection of books I had and then she was like, ooh, nice read, nice read because I... The uh, Devil in the White City. I think she's seen that. And then also the Art of War book I already had. And then she's like, these are some good books you got. I was like, thank you. So then she was like, have you ever heard of these two books? I was like, no. And they're like, I'm going to send them your way. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate that. And then that's how they got here. It was like a real quick conversation. Oh, nice. Um, And I also believe that it takes a village. You've heard that before to raise a child. Because there's times where you don't agree with me. And uh, which is to be expected. And so thank God that I have your aunts and especially Shalice also when you really don't agree with me and you'll call her. And I think you appreciate her scientific approach. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because this is the thing. Like, I feel like a lot of people are like emotion based and they're only based on like morals. Like they don't really take it from more logical standpoint or like scientific standpoint so when i go to school talking about like certain things they're so everybody around me it's like emotionally based on how to solve a problem and i'm like well what if you did this and then they're like wait hold up i think he has a point there so but yeah i do appreciate the scientific view viewpoint there we go i think that's sometimes where we clash Um, Because I'm not as scientific. I am that emotional, (laughs) (laughs) moral, ethical person. And uh, you're not. (laughs) Yeah. And I think sometimes that's where you um, butt heads with other people uh, who have the same emotional response versus the scientific logical one and um but what i will say is i do appreciate that you stand firm in your belief now i don't always agree (laughs) with your belief but i think it also comes to a point you're still young uh just turning 16 (laughs) and there's a lot of life for you to experience so that you can uh, get a bigger view of the world that you're in right now is kind of limited but you've traveled enough with your dad too and yeah. uh, you've been up and down the east eastern coast uh, i think once you've been able to uh experience more of the world like the west coast and even outside the the contiguous united states you'll be able to see different cultures not just in the united states but uh, remember the video you were playing with for me about uh, the British talking about the slang from oh, yeah. the states and how you you said your word cringy. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think it is imperative for you to learn more about other cultures. So if ever you have to lead uh, a diverse group, 
you can relate just like you talked about LeBron James and his adversity you didn't come from that background you've uh, yeah no I'm very I'm very blessed yes and uh, that comes from uh, the hard work that um, everyone around me and you who worked hard so that you didn't have to go through such adversity um, but also I want you to be able I try to teach you to be appreciative and not entitled to me, the only thing I think you're entitled to is respect and who you allow in your circle. If they don't respect you, then they don't need to be in your circle. I think that's the only thing that we are all entitled to. Other than that, any and everything you want, you have to work for it. So with me being your mom and focusing on entrepreneurship and even putting that on you, uh, what are any drawbacks or cons that you have? This is a safe space. You can say it. How oh, you draw back on cons of what? To me being your mom and uh, how I come at you as far as being a, focusing on entrepreneurship um, and even me trying to shape you into a leader. I mean, the way if you put it that way, I feel like there's no real drawbacks. I feel like the only drawback is the fact that um, you're going to ha- you're going to say things that you know going to hurt, and um, uh, you just got to be able to take it. Because I feel as if you can't take it and you just fall under pressure, then you weren't meant to be the leader you're supposed to be. But if you're able to take the pressure, then you're going to be able to like form into that diamond everybody wants you to be. Definitely, and I think that's uh, working on conflict resolution. And when things happen, and anything can happen in a business, you need to be prepared and stay focused. Always have a plan. Exactly, exactly. And if you don't, you surround yourself with a support system that can give you the answer or help you. And not have that much pride to not be able to ask the questions. Okay, outside of just me focusing on you and him being an entrepreneur, what are the drawbacks to me being your mom? Um, I feel as drawbacks, like just in general. In general. In general, drawbacks to you being my mother. Um, it's hard to think of any because any drawback, you got to find a way to adapt to it. So it's like any drawback that I would have said like maybe two years ago, Mm -hmm. I've already adapted to it and now I'm kind of like okay with it. So it's like, yeah. So it's like there's no real drawback. I feel like the only thing would be the fact that we clash, but then those clashes you could learn something on both ends. So like even like you would understand my standpoint and how like, okay, so I understand where you're coming from and then this is just how I feel. So yeah, there's no real drawbacks. If anything, there's more pros to it than anything. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, we had a conversation about being raised by single moms. Now, your dad is in your life. Yeah. Uh, but from a young male, primarily living with his mom, and versus... Your friends that have two parents in the home, what are the differences from your perspective? I feel as I'm, I'm me myself, I feel as I'm more mature than those with two parents. Those with two parents are more coddled and more taken care. I'm not going to say taken care of because you take care of me very well, but I'm going to say more like cushioned. Okay. They don't really get that force of reality yet because they can either, if the mom says no, then they can go to the dad. If the dad says no, they can go to the mom. Like they have options. But with a single mom, if single, if the mom say no, it's a wrap. You gotta, you gotta find a different route. You gotta find a way to like, if you really want something, you either gotta like with a single mom, you gotta, you either have to give solid points to your mom, telling her why it's a good idea to do what you like, what you have in mind, or just do good in the first place so then you don't get say no to but um i feel like if with a single mom depending on that mom because there are bad single moms out there but every mm-hmm. single mom i've ever met they've been very protective of their child and i feel like as they're being protective they also go through a lot because i feel like single moms go through the struggle heavy and if you notice a lot of 
you know, big people nowadays, like famous celebrities had single moms and they both, they all talk about, you know, their struggle, not even like the struggle, like financially, like something mentally could have happened, some traumatizing could have happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's cut due to the single mom and how the single mom is, that is how the child is going to turn out. So if the single mom is strong and if the single mom is like, we are going to get through it, like it has a positive mindset. And so will that child and the child will actually work to make sure that single mom doesn't got to go through that anymore. So then they can, like the mom can be okay, you know. But if you have your single moms, you know, out in the uh, ran down projects and ghettos and all that, and they're just doing drugs and criminals, like ba- like do- basically doing everything that's bad, mm-hmm. then the kid is going to go right to those things because that's all the single mom taught them. or show Environmental? Them. Yes. Gotcha. Well, you almost answered my second question. I was going to say, what uh, ideas or tips did you have for kids that have single moms? Uh, my idea is just don't get mad when they say no. <laughs> <laughs> um, if anything, if they do say no, you got to think about it from their point of view. Because there's been many times when I would question why you say no. And then you'd be like, just get out of my face. And then I'm like. What? <laughs> and then you know with me being like logical and scientific I'm just in here like what was the reason I had everything down but then I didn't really think about the full thing and I had to like you only when you're when you only think logical you still only have half of it because exactly. you still need to think about that emotional piece to it and then to make that full pie so I had to think emotionally to it and then I thought about you know the environment what was going to go happen what type of time it was like say if I wanted to go play basketball but it was like almost almost late so if anything it would be one of two things like either no or you only got this amount of time you better be right back here at this time and then if you're not it you, you ain't doing nothing else but um tips to help kids out uh with single moms just work with them don't work against them because if you work against them then you, you're not you both are progressing to the life you both want because single moms you also got to think about it like they have a life too they have I had to realize that I had to realize like wait my mom isn't like my mom is my mom but she still is herself Mm -hmm. before I came she was herself she was like living life doing she had aspirations and she still has those aspirations and being a parent is a job but you also got to think about it that think about it that parents also need that break Mm -hmm. and that they and in within that break they need to think about what where they want to go next what's their next uh chapter in their life and i feel like i had to realize that because a lot of people don't realize like that's their like they say oh that's just my mom she'll do this for me she'll do that for me like you still got to think about like well she's still a person so Mm -hmm. it's like she's gonna get hurt if you say something or she's going to feel good if you do something for her so that's why anytime like um i get the chance to cook for you even though sometimes i don't take it i try to do it as often now because you're still a person you're not just my mom you're not just someone who tells me to do what i gotta do and then clean the house you know like Mm. you're still a person so just acknowledge that oh i love it proud you my son there we go (laughs) that works and i'm please understand i'm always grateful when you decide to cook (laughs) that's something else i didn't have to do that day (laughs) um i also wanted to know Out of the things that we do, we have our routines where we sit at the table to eat. And those times are, they mean a lot to me, you know, because there's a lot of times, especially once you became a teenager, I give you your space. and But to me, dinner time, we need to sit together. Um, And then that's when we, I get to see what you're doing, uh, whether it's social media or whatever movies or you're into, um, I think too when we take our road trips, one day we'll get back to that. But when mm-hmm. we take our trips, I try to take that time. Whether it's just going to the market, and I'll take the extra long way, and I try to have our uh, life talks. Those are my favorite. Uh, what are some of the things that we do that's your favorite? Yeah, definitely the long drives. Um, Because I love being in the car and I love, like, anything that has to do with cars. So, the long drives uh, to, like, Wegmans or something. Mm -hmm. And we just talk about random stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, you know, this is cool because I'm able to voice my opinion about something. 
and not like get judged or anything because like that's a big thing nowadays if like i remember talking to my friend and they all and they talk about how like their parents are quick to judge them and then i'm just like yeah that's that's messed up that's a dis- dysfunctional like fam like father's daughter like parent child relationship going. Right. and i'm just like in order for you guys to fully like appreciate each other and have a good bond and relationship you got to be able to not judge one another you got to be able to be open so the fact that I'm able to be open with you is very great. Um, what's another thing? Definitely, you know, when you say, you know what, we can get out food today, get food out tonight. You're like, yes. <laughs> There'd be times when I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know what, I'm hungry. And then I had to, I had to go like before I ask you to eat out. I look in the fridge to make sure there's nothing for us to eat. <laughs> so then I remember when you had leftovers, and you're like, you better eat them leftovers. So then I just went on a whole spree and I just ate every leftover and I looked at you. I was like, so uh, what are we going to eat? You're like, eat them. They're gone. (laughs) Oh, well, uh, I was like, you want to cook some? I don't feel like cooking. I always ask that question because I know I can see the look in your eye when you don't feel like cooking. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I mean, you want to go get some New England? (laughs) That's not too bad. (laughs) So, yeah, but definitely eating. Like... Because when you mentioned um, eating dinner at the dinner table and then driving, those are my two favorite things. Eating and driving. Eating is always your favorite thing, yes. So Also, I remember when um, I used to live in the middle room and we used to play games. So those were my favorite things too because I was able to show you like, hey, this is kind of what helps me. Because playing games is like a coping mechanism for me. So I was like, you know what? I kind of want you to understand what I'm doing and what I'm doing. Like, what I'm doing is actually helping me. So whenever we played like the fighting games or Rocket League, I, it would it would be great even though you're like, you cheat me. Oh, y'all never win. It's all right. It's all right. Well, that's why I stopped playing those <laughs> games with you because you beat me every time. So instead, I chose to do the board games, if you notice. Uh, yeah, the board games, too. Yeah, I, I prefer board games with you. I have a better chance because these are games <laughs> that I've played at one time versus these new t- games that I have no idea what's going on. But um, you did mention not being judged, and I try to make sure you feel safe talking to me about whatever. And I do that uh, because then you're free to talk to me. And I don't ever want you to feel like you can't talk to me about anything. And sometimes I feel like I do too much in the sense that I, you know, I work on projects all the time, whether I'm doing reflexology, Reiki, coaching, um, anything. And um, I feel like I'm always on the phone. And so that's why I was set aside Sundays. That's mom and son Sunday. That's our time. And everyone who knows me knows that. So if you notice, my phone hardly ever rings on Sunday. Um, And if it does, I already explained. We have our time prior to if it's a phone call I have to make. And I was trying my best because you had mentioned that to me when you were about 10. When do I get my time? And I said, oh, my goodness, I'm making a mistake. Let me fix this. So ever since then, I've I've been on it. But then you becoming this, you know, (laughs) teenager now. You have a whole new social circle. I'm like, huh, are you tired of Mom and Son Sunday? Oh, no. I'll never get tired of Mom and Son Sunday. But this is what I'm going to say. I feel as um, at this point, I think this is the best time for you to start pushing your business. Like, start pushing more. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, when I was, like, 10, when I was younger, like, as a child, as a developing child, they need that, like, mother attention, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I feel as if you still dedicate to Sundays, like, I'll still be getting that attention I need from a parent. Because if you think about it, any kid that doesn't get attention from their parent or their sole caregiver, they end up, like, really messed up. Like, can you name one child who got neglected by their parents and is, like, doing successful right now? No. Exactly. Because almost everybody that is doing well, they always showed love to their parents. Mother, father, their main caregiver, you know, Mm -hmm. and um, uncle, aunt, you know, so I feel as right now would be like the best time. And even if you do like dedicate the mother, son Sundays, that is still me getting my time with you. 
So, yeah, especially the times when I just randomly, hey, mom. So, yeah, it works out. I love it. So, normally I have my listeners, I give out a homework assignment. So, I'm going to let you give out a homework assignment if you're interested. And that homework assignment can be anything like have a certain talk with your kid. Like, oh. what would you suggest to either the parents to their children or vice versa or to the kids to their parents but homework assignment would you get i i do recommend i highly recommend you have a sit down talk with your child and not even just this average the talk Mm -hmm. but just like just talk about something and get their opinion on something don't judge them i feel like you know most parents they want their kid to live out the life they envision for their child Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, for example, say if you have a father and his son, right? The father is like a prestigious lawyer and he wants his son to be a prestigious lawyer just like him. Mm -hmm. But the son wants to be a chef. Mm -hmm. So then it's going to be a little difficult because the father had all these things planned for him. But then the son isn't really liking it. And then that's just going to commit, like, especially if the communication is really bad. If the communication is bad along with the fact that they have two different envisions of their future for like themselves mm-hmm. for the son then it's just going to be like a very rocky relationship so i feel as if you can be able to talk with your child and just get to know them better even if you feel as you know your child to the to the tip still talk to them because it's it's well needed and it's well appreciated like when you guys can just have a nice talk like you know what like I'll do that sometimes when my friends are like I just had a nice talk with my mom really what y'all talking about I don't know we just we just went off you know oh okay <laughs> oh that makes you feel good I'm doing something right <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's the homework assignment I like it and um so should so y'all choose to accept it have that sit down with your kids and just let them speak freely with no judgment. And then you get to gauge where your kids are mentally and uh, socially. You get to find out, too, who your friends are, what your friends are up to. Yeah, find out the type of child you have in your house. Definitely. I think it's necessary. Because if you're clueless, if you if you don't talk to your child and you feel like your child's an angel, he's probably not an angel. Right. So you got to talk to them, find out what type. And also, like, find the, I remember, I don't know, but it was like, I always ask these type of questions to find out what a person's mindset is. It wouldn't even be the ones I do on my teachers anymore. It would be like, if I want, I'll ask, like, what somebody's favorite music genre is. Mm -hmm. And then base, or like their favorite song or their favorite artist. And base, and then I'll go to that artist. I'll listen to the type of music they play. And then that's normally what helps me figure out somebody's like mindset so for like example um say if somebody's favorite artist was uh i'm gonna go with a new school trippy red trippy red makes very sad music Mm -hmm. and um like love songs too but very sad and so if they say my favorite um artist is trippy red and their favorite song is love scars because that's one of the like his biggest songs and it's very sad then I'd figure out like okay so this person must be going through something or he's like this person's probably really sad so I'll just like that it's like questions to find out the type of person you're dealing with oh I like it so you hear the music I listen to what would you say about me you listen to a lot of upbeat music I rarely hear you listen to sad music and you're in the shows because you're kind of a bubbly person like your co-workers even said that you're very bubbly in the morning dear god I don't know how but <laughs> yeah so um you listen to you're pretty you're pretty open to uh new music as I played some new school artists for you and mm-hmm. anytime you mentioned play this artist it would always be the upbeat song cause I, I could find a sad song and then you'd be like I don't wanna listen to this it's a little too sad I'm like I got you mom you know put on J.I.D. Jaden Smith you mm-hmm. know so, um, yeah, you're definitely a happy person. And then you always listen to the type of song where it's like, it's upbeat and you could tell, like, like you're a hard worker. Because, um, what was that song by Jay-Z that you always listen to? Show me what you got. Which one? Not no, the other not one. The, one, the um... one, it was, 
I don't know, but it was one of those Jay Z songs, and it was like really hype, and you were like, oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> he was in the car ride, and we both. Oh uh, yes, I can't think of the name right now because I can never find it. Because you have to have an Apple subscription in order yeah. to get it and all of that. Oh my goodness! Or another yeah. example, uh, nah, it's you owe me. Pay me back. Oh like, yeah, yeah, like either way, like I can find a bunch of songs that you'd be like, like a bunch of classic songs and. and they all kind of show like you're just this happy person, and you can tell by the beat too. Mm-hmm. That like the beat is mainly what gives it off because they're all happy beats, and um, you're also very chill, which is why um, you listen to Method Man. Because if you li- like listen to the Tikal album, yeah, and you listen to some of the songs, it's like it's upbeat, but it's a chill beat, right? So it's like I want to chill, <laughs> I want to chill though. So. Um, yeah. Well, I like your analogies. I like your uh, methods of deciphering your friends' uh, personalities. Uh, That's what you have to do nowadays. I feel like it's essential. It's uh, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna say it's essential because you don't want to like blind, like just blindly get into a, some type of relationship with somebody. Think about it. Would you rather get in a relationship with somebody you don't know but think they're like your friend? Or would you rather know what type of person they are and what they might do within like the next couple of days or within the next couple of weeks? You know? I am so proud. It's kind of hard for me to come up with another question. I'm just I'm admiring uh, your thought process. Even though, you know, you still have that scientific approach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, at this point, before we wrap it up, is there anything else that you would like to say? Um, to the people listening, if you have kids, make sure you pay attention to them. Uh, watch how they grow. Watch how they walk. Um, watch how they socialize with you, interact with you. Um, be observant to everything around you. Don't be observant just to what's going on within that day. Be Make sure you always have a plan for something. Like... For the young, if there are younger viewers, make sure you have a plan for what you plan on being or what you plan on seeing yourself in the next five or ten years, and um, what you have to do now to get to that point. And um, wait, one more thing. That was great, but to the kids, to the kids, and now to the kids of the entrepreneurs, to the kids of entrepreneurs, the parents. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, Support your uh, your parents, um, especially, you know, sometimes you're going to have to understand that they got to do certain things. So you may lose out on like maybe a couple, maybe a few family moments. You may be able to like, you know, maybe you're going to have to go through things you don't like. But at the end of the day, you still got to think about um, the entrepreneur parents are doing this for you. Right. Entrepreneur parents are trying to make sure you have a better life and they're going to have to go through the rough bumps. They're going to have to go through the times when they're not going to be able to give you as much attention as they gave you like, when you were younger. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to be able to get uh, used to that. Uh, so basically adapt to it. And also, um, as much as I hate to say it, you're going to have to learn how to wash dishes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wash your clothes and all that. <laughs> Dear God. Um, you know... You, yeah, and also be able to help them out. If you can help out in any way, do it. If you can help out your parents with their job or if, give them some ideas on, like, just anything. Just help them out. So, yeah. I appreciate it. I love it. And not to mention, it's my job to make sure you know how to take care of yourself anyway as you go into the world. Yeah. Good <laughs> <My> job. <laughs> Even though we know you can't stay in the dishes, you know how to wash them when yeah. it's time. All right. Well, at this point, I would like to know what's your mantra. My mantra is... Take your time. You've said a lot of profound things today. It could be (laughs) something simple. It doesn't have to be what somebody else said. Just what do you say to yourself to get yourself through rough times? Or So when when I'm trying to get myself through a rough time, I normally think about the circumstance and then... I'll just say, I'm going to get through it. When I get through it, I'm going to be better than it. So I'm going to get through it, and I'm going to be better than it. Oh, I like it. It's, it's kind of like around the same lines of like what what didn't kill me made me stronger. Right. 
So it's like, it's around the same line. So if you, whatever tried to kind of break you down and put you in that rough time, mm -hmm. you're going to get through it. And you're going to become better than it so it doesn't affect you again. So then you can go on to the next challenge. I love it. And that's exactly true. Amen. All right. So with that being said, this concludes this session. I thought this was just amazing. Once again, I'm so proud of you, son. And if you want to reach out to me, uh, you can reach me on Instagram at Life Coach Latoya, Facebook Coaching by Latoya, and my website coachingbylatoya.com. Until next Wednesday. Thank you.